passed a bill yesterday that would create a pathway to citizenship for millions of dreamers, while it will likely face an uphill battle in the Senate. Plus, how a school that helps students in a disadvantaged community was able to stay open throughout the pandemic. And later this half hour on Break It Down, the difference between seeing and having vision. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News in Arizona PBS. I'm Gabrielle Zabat. And I'm Jake Holter. Thank you for joining us. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey visited the U.S.-Mexico border today as the region is experiencing a surge in migrants. He flew over the Douglas area and held a roundtable discussion with several Republican lawmakers, local officials, and Republican Florida Senator Rick Scott. Ducey tweeted several photos of his visit saying, quote, our nation is on pace to reach the highest number of apprehensions at the border in the last 20 years. We need DC to acknowledge this as a crisis and address this crisis. The governor recently joined other Republicans in blaming President Joe Biden for fueling the problems at the border. Biden lifted some of predecessor Donald Trump's restrictive immigration policies when he took office, though the surge began while Trump was still president. Yesterday, the House passed a bill that would create a pathway to citizenship for millions of dreamers, undocumented immigrants brought to the US as children with bipartisan support. Cronkite News reporter Emma Van Denity explains how the community is responding. The American Dream and Promise Act of 2021 is a measure many undocumented immigrants have waited for since it failed back in 2010. Yet, while this is a huge step, many more have to take place before some can claim citizenship. This is a day of not only passing legislation, but a cause for celebration. As the votes were counted, thousands of DACA recipients were celebrating. Reina Montoya was one of them. Uh, I feel that there was a big part of me that felt hope again. The bill is passed. The U.S. House of Representatives passed the American Dream and Promise Act yesterday by 31 votes, a big step for those trying to gain citizenship in the United States. It means an opportunity, an opportunity to live with peace, to have certainty, to be able to start planning like a family, planning a career. The act plans to cancel some deportation proceedings and offer temporary resident legal status for 10 years. This applies to those who had temporary protected status or deferred enforced departure status and who have been in the U.S. for three years prior. Immigration attorney Daniel Rodriguez said the U.S. is ready to roll this out. The infrastructure in terms of what this would look like, it's already there with the United States uh, Citizenship and Immigration Services. The education has already been in there in, in the community in terms of how do you go uh, through this process because many individuals with DACA have, have, have got it the first time, have you know, renewed it at least a few times by now. If passed by the Senate, the act could offer citizenship to 281,000 undocumented immigrants living in Arizona, with 81% of those coming from Mexico. Yet Montoya believes that there is a greater opportunity for the state. DACA is a proven record that when you're able to legalize or provide even some sort of legal status or presence to people, our, our taxes and revenue increase, our opportunities for the state in order to become a more prosperous place uh, becomes better not only for dreamers or undocumented youth, but for all of us. Yet this won't be easy, as the act faces many challenges in the Senate, such as Republican filibusters and winning the votes of some moderate Democrats. The vote waits in the Senate, leaving immigrants on their toes once again. I want to hold that hope and I want to celebrate, but I know that the job is not done yet. It's still unclear when the Senate will vote on the House bill, but a study from Pew Research shows almost 75 percent of Americans favor providing legal status for undocumented immigrants. Now it's all up to the Senate. In the Broadcast Center, Emma Vandenighty, Cronkite News. Tonight, a visual to spread awareness about Asian American hate crimes will take place at the Arizona State Capitol in Phoenix. Violence against Asian Americans has been on the rise since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Stop AAPI Hate, an initiative that began tracking violence and harassment against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders last year, received over 3,000 complaints from all 50 states and Washington, D.C. According to the organization, there were at least 500 anti-Asian hate incidents reported between January 1st and February 28th. More than a third of the incidents took place in businesses. Among those saying they experienced hate, 42% are Chinese, followed by about 15% who are Korean. A new partnership between three entities has the purpose of improving care for underserved populations. 
I was able to find out how and where the help will be distributed. Arizona is one of eight states that had increases in the number of people without health insurance, according to the latest report of the U.S. Census Bureau, but a new partnership is set to change that. It, it should provide a systemic approach to providing equal access to health care. Creighton University's School of Medicine's Phoenix campus and St. Vincent de Paul are teaming up with a $10 million investment from the Virginia Piper Charitable Trust. Shannon Clancy of St. Vincent de Paul says this effort will help provide health insurance to underserved communities. Patients come to us with no other options and nowhere else to turn for help. And so if we say no, the answer is no. So St. Vincent de Paul's mission inspires us to not only say yes, but to ensure that that yes comes with the highest quality of care, with the greatest dignity and respect. Hi, I'm here with the U.S. Census Bureau. How According to the census, in Arizona, 750,000 people didn't have health insurance last year. That is one in 10 people, or 10.6 percent of the population. The census data also showed that nationally, Hispanics had the lowest rate of health insurance coverage. Nearly 18 percent did not have insurance in 2018. The rate of Hispanics with health insurance dropped by 1.6 percent from 2017. St. Vincent de Paul and Creighton have worked together for more than a decade to operate the monthly student-led clinic with support from Creighton School of Medicine faculty, third and fourth year medical students, and Creighton alumni physician volunteers. The clinic will now serve as a primary teaching facility for first and second year students as well. Dr. Anwar of St. Vincent de Paul says this is a win for everybody. We are teaching them to understand what is health disparity that we are experiencing. Population here usually are low literacy, low socioeconomic. They need the extra hand. They need the extra time. Officials of the Virginia G. Piper Charitable Trust announced they have invested millions of dollars to help people in need in Maricopa County. The Biden administration is sending millions of coronavirus vaccines to Canada and Mexico. The White House press secretary says they'll send 2.5 million doses to Mexico and 1.5 million to Canada. It'll be the first time the U.S. has shared vaccines directly with another country, and both countries have expressed their appreciation. God bless America. They're coming to our rescue. Thank God. The Biden administration is sending the AstraZeneca vaccine, which made headlines after claims arose that it causes blood clots. But further investigation from the World Health Organization has cleared the vaccine as safe. Meanwhile, one county in Arizona is expanding its vaccine eligibility to anyone 18 years and older. Pinal County Public Health Services officials made the announcement saying it will be opening up vaccine appointments to individuals who work or live in Pinal County at county-run vaccine locations. Officials recommended checking the Pinal County COVID-19 vaccine website to determine which locations offer Moderna or the one-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So far, Pinal County has administered almost 120,000 coronavirus vaccines. Though many students are just now getting back into the classroom, STEP school students have been attending in-person classes since August 17. As Alexis Young reports, faculty members say it was a decision made in the best interest of the students, many of who live in a disadvantaged community. Serving students and families, some who are in transition, online learning wasn't feasible for most Step Up students. Many don't have access to the technology needed at home for online learning. So the Dean of Students, Diane Fernikiao, and Step Up Schools teachers use the CARES Act and ESSER grant funds to get students in class safely. We actually changed out every water fountain, changed out our air. Everybody has diffusers on their desks to help purify air. All the plexiglass that we did, all the circles on the floor in the school when they're standing in lunch line, all of that's done. We used $30,000 and did all of that. Despite the social distancing and prevention efforts, there have been a few COVID-19 cases. Seven started in August. We're required to notify the Maricopa County and we do that. To the untrained eye, step up schools in the surrounding Washington Escobedo community needs outreach. In actuality, step up schools are the prime beneficiary of an overwhelming amount of donations and support right here from Washington Escobedo's residents. Not only do they pour into the school and the students, but the staff and faculty as well. Something teacher Ivan Mercado appreciates. We don't use any of our funds. This is the first time I get encounter such a great help from the community. I'm talking about Salvation Army, 
I'm talking about the state of Arizona. I'm talking about ingenuity. And that ingenuity helped the school be able to resume in-person clothing and book drives, which will again be monthly events. Dean Fernikiao makes donation wish lists every month. Go to stepupschoolsmesa.org to learn more. In the studio, Alexis Young, Cronkite News. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is expected to update its social distancing guidelines for schools from a recommendation of six feet of distance between mass people to three feet. A Harvard study published last week found no difference in COVID transmissions in Massachusetts schools when students distanced three feet instead of six. It's important to note that the students in the study were wearing masks. And so that was the first study we had seen that, that looked at three feet versus six feet. Indeed, because six feet has been such a challenge, their science has leaned in and there are now emerging studies on the question between three feet and six feet. I'm aware of several that will be released in the next several days and we are actively looking at our guidance to update it to address that science. This comes concerns are growing that the United States will experience another surge in coronavirus cases. Some states are rolling back coronavirus restrictions and easing mask mandates. Experts are urging even fully vaccinated people to continue to mask. Right now, 16 states do not have statewide mask mandates. Coming up next on Cronkite News, how the Navajo Nation's terrain in Arizona inspired the naming of an important discovery on Mars. Plus, how would you like to have a pet that will be with you for up to 100 years? We'll have all the details after the break. Change has become a constant. The way we embrace it defines our future. When you support Arizona PBS, you plant a seed. Seeds that provide educational outreach in our community. Seeds that put our digital resources to work. Seeds that foster the trusted news coverage you expect from PBS. And seeds that continue the amazing PBS programs you love. But our garden can't keep growing without your support. Visit our website to see all the ways you can help our garden grow. Plant a seed with Arizona PBS today. It's prime time on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons, your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. One location in Arizona has inspired a new name in space. NASA's Perseverance rover is focusing on a rock named after the planet it's on, in Navajo. The rock is called Maz, or Mars in the Navajo language. It's part of a partnership with the Navajo Nation the rover's team has been using to name geographic features on the red planet. It makes sense given how much the terrain resembles the Navajo Nation's land in Arizona. A Navajo engineer and the team at Jet Propulsion Laboratory helped get permission and collaboration from his tribe to use the names. So far, Navajo leaders have provided 50 names NASA can use, with more to come as those are exhausted. The language is credited for helping win World War II as Navajo code talkers used it to transmit messages the Axis forces never cracked. Now that we know all about Mars, let's take a look at our own planet. Abigail Verwick is standing by with a look at the weekend weather forecast across the state. Abby? We are expecting some gorgeous warmer temperatures this upcoming weekend. Taking a look at our highs on Saturday, Phoenix at around 85 degrees, Sedona just below 70, and the Grand Canyon area just below 60 degrees. Some cooler high temperatures all up north here. However, overall, warmer temperatures across the whole state. Taking a look at our radar, there is not a cloud in the sky this upcoming weekend, which is going to be contributing to those warmer temperatures we'll be seeing. This is a great weekend for us to really enjoy that Arizona sun before it gets too hot and brutal. But what about this evening? Taking a look at around 6 o'clock, it's going to be about 82 degrees and sunny. However, we're going to see that temperature drop down, but only to about 70 degrees. 
As I said, clear skies all weekend, so tonight would be a great night to do anything outdoors, really. Whether it's eating on the patio or simply watching the sunset, even looking at the stars, tonight is a great night to do that as there is not a cloud in the sky. Let's take a look at the rest of our weekend. As I said, Saturday is going to be beautiful and sunny with a high of 85 degrees. Sunday is going to be a little bit cooler, but still sunny and beautiful. And I know we don't want to think about it, but Monday is just around the corner. But it's going to be sunny with a high of 75. So we do have that to look forward to. Let's take a look at the rest of the work week. Tuesday and Wednesday, similar temperatures to that Monday weather in the mid 70s and sunny. However, Thursday, it's going to warm up to almost 80 degrees and we're going to have a small chance of some clouds rolling in. However, just as quickly as those clouds may roll in, they're going to roll right back out just in time for next weekend. Friday forecast is sunny skies with a high of 76 and Saturday it should warm back up to a high of almost 80 degrees and still be sunny. That is your eight day weather forecast in the Weather Center. I'm Abigail Verwick. Finally tonight, a desert tortoise may not be what comes to mind when you think about getting a pet, but the Arizona Game and Fish Department hopes you will. The agency is accepting applications to adopt tortoises. Cronkite News' Riley Walter tells us how it all works. Each year, Arizona Game and Fish adopts captive desert tortoises that can't be released back into the wild because they can spread diseases. There are currently 180 tortoises available for adoption, and only an Arizona resident can adopt a Sonoran desert tortoise. People must build a burrow for the tortoise to live in and show proof of it when they submit their application. It may seem unconventional to have a tortoise, but tortoises are actually easy to care for. You plant some plants in your backyard, they'll just kind of graze themselves. Um, you just give them water a few times a week. Um, they're not going to make a big mess. So they're really, really easy to take care of, but they're also so cute and fun. Like you can just watch them running around and it's so cute. Desert tortoises can live up to 80 to 100 years. You can submit your application to adopt a tortoise on the Arizona Game and Fish website. In the studio, Riley Walter, Cronkite News. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.